Welcome everyone. Thanks for joining with us this morning. If you're a visitor this morning, we'd love to know that you're here watching. So we encourage you to either just drop us a comment uh, below the video, or if you can send us an email at lumc.churchsecretary.com, that'll help us know that you're watching and Pastor Vinny can reach out and say a quick hello to you. Additionally, we're planning uh, a drive-through fundraiser, a drive-through dinner fundraiser. And you should see more information coming out in the next few weeks around that. But we wanted people to know that we're planning this. So to start watching the e-note and whatnot for details that'll be coming out. Lastly, I know we're all chomping at the bit to uh, get moved into the red tier. We're still in the purple tier. Um, and as soon as we're in the red tier, we're going to send out more information as well about meeting in person again. Just like everyone else, we're waiting uh, for that tier color to change. But when it does, we will be ready to go. So with that, let's get started. Welcome this day to the second step on our Lenten journey. We come with great hope and expectation as we walk the way of Christ. Today's journey will demand much of us. Lord, make us ready to offer ourselves to you. Come, let us begin again the wondrous excursion. Let us place our lives in God's abiding love. Amen. When we walk with the Lord in the light of his word, what a glory he sheds on our way. While we do his good will, he abides with us still and with all who will trust and obey. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Not a shadow can rise, not a cloud in the skies, but his smile quickly drives it away. Not a doubt or a fear, not a sigh or a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Then in fellowship sweet, we will sit at his feet, or we'll walk by his side in the way. What he says we will do, where he sends we will go. Never fear, only trust and obey. Trust and obey, for there's no other way. To be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. Please join me in this prayer of confession by saying aloud the words highlighted in yellow. Guiding Lord, even though we hesitated on our Lenten journey, we vowed to come with you through all the trials and fears towards the cross. Today we face the challenge which true commitment brings. Are we willing to offer our whole selves to you in service? We would like to think that we can do that, but we are aware of how many times we have turned away from service and instead focused on our own desires. 
remind us again of the commitment you would have us give if we are to become disciples. Forgive our stubbornness and fears. Lead us forward, gracious Lord, up these steps towards the cross. Amen. Beloved, attend to these words of assurance. The journey of discipleship is never easy, but you can be assured that you will not be on this journey alone. Place your trust in Jesus. Amen. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am El Shaddai. Walk with me and be trustworthy. I will make a covenant between us and I will give you many, many descendants. Abram fell on his face and God said to him, But me, my covenant is with you. You will be the ancestor of many nations. And because I have made you the ancestor of many nations, your name will no longer be Abram, but Abraham. I will make you very fertile. I will produce nations from you, and kings will come from you. I will set up my covenant with you and your descendants after you in every generation as an enduring covenant. I will be your God and your descendants God after you. Jesus, lover of my soul, let me to thy bosom fly. While the nearer waters roll, while the tempest still is high, hide me, O my Savior, hide till the storm of life is past. Safe into the haven, guide. Oh, receive my soul at last. Support and comfort me. All my trust on thee is stayed. All my help from thee I bring. Cover my defenseless head with the shadow. my care. Reach me out thy gracious hand, while I of thy strength receive. Hoping against hope I stand, dying and behold I live. Grace with thee is found, grace to cover all my sin. Let the healing streams abound, make and keep me pure within. Thou of life, the fountain art, 
freely let me take a beat Spring thou up within my heart Rise to all eternity At this time, we ask you to spend a few moments with God, either in silence or in prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever, Amen. A reading from Mark 8, 31 through 38. Then Jesus began to tell his disciples, The human one must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, chief priests, and the legal experts, and be killed, and then after three days rise from the dead. He said this plainly, but Peter took him, Peter took hold of Jesus and, and scolding him, began to correct him. Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, then sternly corrected Peter. Get behind me, Satan. You are not thinking God's thoughts, but human thoughts. After calling the crowd together with his disciples, Jesus said to them, All who want to come after me must say no to themselves, take up their cross and follow me. All who want to save their lives will lose them, but all who lose their lives because of me and because of good news will save them. Why would people gain the whole world but lose their lives? What will people gain in exchange for their lives? Whoever is, exchange, whoever is, um, whoever is it ashamed of me and my words is this unfaithful and sinful generation. The human one will be ashamed of that people when he comes in the the Father's glory with the holy angels. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Hello, friends. Well, today's scripture passage puts before us another heavy subject. Last week, we talked about fasting, and this week, we're going to talk about submission, a quite scary word in our uh, very autonomous, do what you will society, but a uh, nonetheless very important uh, principle and practice that we need to incorporate 
in our journey of faith, if we're going to uh, encounter God more deeply and love others more richly. So let's continue as we explore this theme that we are looking at this Lenten season of uh, deepening in the art of Christian spirituality. Now, today's text teaches us that the only way to life and connection, true life and connection with God, is through death to self and submission to God. Admittedly, pretty heavy stuff, wouldn't you agree? It's hard truth. Actually, it was a hard truth for Peter, uh, just like we heard when Peter heard that Jesus was going to be submitting to God and that that submission would lead to uh, the death of Christ, his death on a cross. Peter stepped up and said, no, that's not the way. That's not how this is supposed to work. And Jesus said, get behind me, Satan. Literally, get behind me, accuser. The one who is going against, as it were, the thoughts of God and focusing on human thoughts at the human level. And human thoughts at the human level often do that. They often want to um, skirt around uh, submitting, uh, trying to offer other alternatives other than submitting our will to the will of God. And so we see in Peter really a representation uh, of all of our tendencies, oftentimes, to want to not submit. Uh, my will be done rather than thy will be done. So let's not be too hard on Peter because I think in Peter we see a bit of all of us who try to uh, come up with other ways other than uh, obedience and submission. The cross is indeed, after all, in the end, the true path of liberation as we're going to um, see hopefully uh, today. Verses 34 to 36 go on and say, he called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it. And those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? This is a, a hard teaching, um, even though it's a necessary teaching, um, but Jesus puts it out there. It's kind of the, the, um, uh, the, the, catch, the catchphrase or the, the thing that's supposed to be promoted for his group. I mean, could you imagine today using that as a promotional uh, to try to get people to come to the group? Uh, come to our group, join our group, come and die to yourself. Uh, and submit to God. Um, and yet that's the standard. That's, that's what Jesus is putting out there as the standard for uh, being a part of his movement in his group. Submission scares us, though, doesn't it? Submission scares us. We have become accustomed to thinking ourselves masters of our own lives um, and our own destinies. So we tend to um, not want to submit the will. Now, many of you know that I used to teach uh, many, many moons ago in high school. I taught uh, Western civilization. I was the chair of the West of the history department. I used to take kids overseas uh, to Europe, and we would go and explore. Um, and it was a wonderful experience. And I would teach some of the classics, some of the um, uh, ancient texts uh, from. Plato and Aristotle, and we'd, we'd read a lot of the, the great thinkers up to, up to modern times. And I enjoyed reading the wisdom from the classical world, particularly the classical Western uh, world, the Greco-Roman world. Um, many of the authors and thinkers of that world understood, rightly, I think, that the will, the human will, the place from which we decide, the place from which we choose, was a place that shaped our character, the kind of person we would become. This was, we could find this wisdom in the East as well. Uh, Lao Tzu says, watch your thoughts for they become your actions. Watch your actions for they become your habits. Watch your habits for they become your character. Watch your character because it will become your destiny. 
I'm sure some of you have probably heard that before. Well, the same is true in the Western tradition as well, um, that our decisions form our character, that our will uh, actually determines the kind of person we become, uh, which is a part of our character. Actually, in the Greek, the word character means to engrave, to etch. Every little decision we're making is being etched upon us. It's, it's being rooted and dug down into the kind of person we are uh, becoming. So every time you make a choice, you're etching into your character. Therefore, according to the, the ancients, even, even those up in the medieval world often taught how the human will needed to be shaped. It needed to be shaped for the good so that we would make decisions that contributed to a good character, which would ultimately not just benefit ourselves, but benefit society. It was believed, again, I think rightly, that in order for our will and for our decisions to function correctly, it needed to learn to submit to and be shaped by the truth. The truths of morality, the truths of religion, the truths of natural uh, philosophy, science. Aristotle, of course, is one of the premier figures. Um, he wrote in his uh, very famous work on ethics that the, the purpose of life was uh, the enjoyment of the good, and the good was summed up in his word happiness. And happiness wasn't simply you know, the, the emotion of feeling good or, or, or being, you know, happy, clappy. But it was really about achieving the end through which, uh, for which we were, were made. To, ha to have that kind of happiness. We may say blessedness. Um, so, but what's interesting about his thought is that happiness was acquired not by giving in to all of your desires. Not by allowing the will to have everything it wanted. Actually, it was by curbing our desires and learning how to want what was good, which required elements of discipline and submission and self-restraint. This is very counterintuitive for us living in the modern world who are being told in, in, in many times in many ways um, that happiness, blessedness comes by doing what you want, giving in to your will at all times don't worry about submitting or shaping your will or, or exercising practices that would discipline you. Uh, forget all that. Just do what you want. Very different than his idea and many of our ancient forebearers' idea in terms of how to achieve um, the good life, the blessed life. Happiness is not about fulfilling your desires, but having right desires. And in order to have right desires, we have to be aiming at the good. But in order to have desires that achieve the good, we have to uh, limit those desires, train our desires. We have to learn the value of submission, submission to good things, not satisfying our will, but training your will towards the good. So again, very counterintuitive, isn't it? It's no longer the case, I think, in our modern world where we don't really have any objective standard. We don't really have an objective, unchanging uh, standard for morality and goodness and truth. It's all very subjective. And so that makes it hard for us to talk about even what it means to train our will uh, for good. Because oftentimes we're just doing what is immediately uh, expedient or useful. The modern world has rejected the idea of training and submission of the will. I'm thinking of now the 19th century philosopher Friedrich Nietzsche, who proclaimed that the death of God, uh, he famously said God is dead. And with that proclamation, um, the way of knowing what was good, what was right or wrong, the, the idea is, is that we, we can know truth, we can know right or wrong based on an unchanging objective truth outside of our own subjective ideas. Um, and so with the death of God goes the death, as it were, of morality, of knowing what's right or wrong. So what would take the place 
of God? Well, Nietzsche gave an answer, and it's an answer that many are living into today. I think Nietzsche is probably the one who really laid the groundwork for uh, how many of us are living and experiencing the modern world. What did he replace uh, in the place of God, the, the God who was dead, according to Nietzsche? The human will, the will to power. All that's left at the end of the day is you uh, and your decision, your decision to achieve maximum power, as it were, to decide uh, your own destiny, to live as you will live, and to achieve, as it were, power as you can achieve it through the human will. So it's about doing what you want, unhindered by morality or restriction or religion. Um, and this modern philosophy has really become more or less part and parcel of how the modern world understands the will. Our will is simply to be uh, dom dominant. Uh, we, are to, we are to just follow our will, follow your bliss. You may have heard that, kind of the spiritual uh, version of this. You should, your will should never really be submissive to higher ideals, ultimate ideal, much, much less God, much less God. But your will should be unrestrained and based in your own personal autonomy to do what you want, what you will. So submission to God in all of this therefore becomes the original sin, the obstacle to personal freedom and enlightenment. It becomes a dirty word. Many of us react um, to that word submission because of these type of philosophies now. Submission strikes at the heart of many self-help spiritualities oftentimes that claim enlightenment can only be found by doing what you want. Or as we said, follow your bliss your bliss you are the one that determines as it were what is bliss submission has also become a dirty word in our uh, independent american context where the heroes at least the heroes of yesteryear but there's still uh, heroes today that are like this I'm, I'm talking about john wayne and the james dean type uh, you know the, the person that's not accountable to anyone that comes from nowhere and going nowhere but when he shows up they save the day they're accountable to themselves and they're gone right and today we have current pop stars current entertainment you know people celebrities that kind of exemplify this kind of radical individualism this radical autonomy that that really contributes to this idea that it's all about you it's all about kind of how you live and and that's it right? The one who's true to themselves is the rugged, authentic person living rightly. Now, let me say, I, I do understand that submission is sometimes, and it's something that can be abused and misunderstood. It's part of the reason. It's not just because we have a philosophy now that tends to emphasize um, the autonomy of the human will. That is, that we can just kind of be God ourselves, so that's, that, that affects us. But also there's, there's, there's uh, negative examples of people who are abusing um, uh, their authority, their influence, and doing that in the name of submission, right? Submit to me, submit to me, submit to me. And it winds up being, people wind up being taken advantage of. We've been actually, we've been seeing this in the news. We see this in particular with Christian leaders who are, uh, come, you know, who are, who are being shown to be people who are abusing their uh, position and um, getting caught up in scandals, whether it be sexual scandals or otherwise. And this makes it hard, I think, for people coming into a religious context and being invited to consider this issue of submission because there's been such a uh, misuse of, of leadership and... Um, um, uh, authority within the church. So it becomes hard, and I understand that. We need to name that. But abuses of power should not unconditionally cast suspicion on religion any more than abuses of power in government should cast unconditional suspicion on our democracy or on science or on any other branch of human knowledge, for that matter. So what are we talking about when we talk about submission? Submission means not doing what I want to do. 
Pretty simple. Yeah, so complicated, so hard, right? That's how it is oftentimes with simple truths. They're so hard to live into. But submission means not doing what I want to do, but what someone else wants me to do. I can remember as a young, young man, my mom signed me up for music school in New Haven, Connecticut. I grew up on the East Coast and I had a, a little bit of a talent for listening to music and being able to play it by ear, but I needed to uh, submit to the instructor, submit to the instructions and to the lesson. And what I would do is I would go to the music school, I would come home and I would hear the song and I would just play it from, from, by ear and I wouldn't submit myself to the notes, to the music, to the structure. And so I, I missed out on being able to read music and I can't to this day really read music. Um, it, it's a blessing to play by ear, but I'm losing out on failing to submit to the instruction of, of the music teacher. And I think we're, we're talking about learning and growing. We all have to submit. And I don't know if you've had an experience like that where you you're not submitting and you kind of suffer the, the repercussions of that. But submission is something we're all doing. We're learning a trade, we're learning a new skill, we're apprenticing um, hierarchies of authority in our society. Some of you are in the military, you know what it means uh, <laughs> to submit and to be in a chain of command, right? Well, Christian submission is learning how to render to Christ more and more control of our lives. That's what we're talking about. If you, hear, if you hear nothing, just hear that. That's what we're talking about. Christian submission is learning how to render to Christ, to God, more and more control of our lives. We call that, by the way, discipleship. That's what discipleship is. Isn't it interesting that we embrace submission when it comes to our jobs, our learning, whether it be you know from a teacher or whoever, uh, to the law, right, laws, police, or submit, in other areas of society, right? We're, we're okay with it there. But when it comes to our relationship to God, to how we actually live day by day, then we tend to skirt it. We tend to make it a sideline issue or a dirty word or just ignore it altogether. This is exactly what we cannot do, sisters and brothers, if we're going to be disciples of Jesus Christ and we're gonna press into this spiritual life together. Did you know that all religions and really all spiritualities worth their grain of salt uh, affirm that the beginning journey with God starts with this idea of submission. It starts with this idea of we have to die to ourselves. We have to let go of our ordinary way of thinking and, and living and doing. By the way, when we talk about repenting and believing in the gospel, before we can believe and have confidence, we have to repent. And what is repent? Repent is really submitting our mind and our thoughts to, to, to the reality of God. It's to turn away from how we normally think so that we can put our confidence and belief in, in God. But, but all religions start there and all spiritualities start there with this idea that we have to let go of our normal way of thinking that's rooted in our ego, rooted in our pride, rooted in our self, rooted in our will. And so the Christian faith is no different, but rather than simply dying to self and looking inward or to philosophies or to, to the natural world as a source of ultimate truth, we look to Christ, we look to God. In other words, Christian submission is not simply what all spiritualities affirm as necessary, which is dying to ourself. It also says that we die to ourself by following someone else. So it's not just this willingness to let go of my ego, but let go of my ego and allow something else to take control, namely someone else, Christ, God. It's about following. It's not just about letting go. It's about following. Hear that. Submission is not just about letting go. It's about following. It's about following Jesus. So our submission is to be shaped around Jesus. We don't, we don't annihilate our will. That's uh, 
Buddhism teaches that the problems stem from the human will, the human desire. And that's true. But it pretty much ends there with the annihilation of the will. Therefore, you have to annihilate your will. You have to get rid of your desire. Christianity says, no, we don't eliminate our desire. We uh, reshape it. We reform it around the way of Jesus. That our desires are good, uh, but they're good insofar as we allow them to be reshaped. So we submit. That's how we do it, through faith to Christ. So we don't annihilate our will. We don't look at our will and say our will is God. That's divinizing our will. And we don't make our will God. Because if we do that, then it's all about just doing what I want. And the gospel calls us to something higher than just doing what we want. So we don't annihilate our will. We don't spiritualize our will. And we don't see our will as the way to achieve power over others in the pursuit of our desire, which is the modern uh, view of the will. Thank you to Nietzsche for giving us that with his will to power. We don't do that. We don't annihilate the will. We don't divinize the will. And we don't empower the will on the basis of autonomy and self-choice, but rather we submit it to the life and teachings of Jesus Christ. That's what Christian submission is all about. This is what it means to take up the cross. This is what it means to take up the cross and follow Jesus. You see that? It's not just about dying on the cross, letting go of our will. It's also about following. So we take up the cross and follow Jesus. Hear that. In the cross, we submit. We die to self. And in following Jesus, we direct our submission to him. So submission doesn't have to be a dirty word, but a beautiful word, because our submission is not to something scary. It's not to something hateful. It's not to something evil or pernicious. It's not to something judgmental. But it is to something loving. It is to something personal and gracious and compassionate. In other words, it is unto Jesus, who is filled with grace and filled with goodness. So submission to Christ is the call to do and to become like Christ. So submission should not be a scary word or a dirty word, but something that we should be encouraged, invited, uh, and passionate even to, to, to carry through on. But submission to Christ is hard when our ideas about God particularly are so off. But when we see the one in whom we are called to submit to and follow as love, then we will grow in our willingness to follow, I believe. I get it. I get it. On the surface, submission seems like a dirty word, though, still. With all that, having said all that, submission, you know, some may say, well, submission limits my freedom. Or, or, or submission leaves me open to abuse. Or submission can turn me into a robot. Or submission, that's just for, for church people. That's what religious people do with no brains. But you know what? If Even if all that's true, I would say that it's only true insofar as the thing or the person being submitted to is deficient. We're not submitting to a, a deficient deity. We're not submitting to something that is untrustworthy. We're not submitting to something that is evil or hateful and will therefore make us into robots or ignorant or any of that. We're submitting to the creator of all, the good creator of all, the loving creator of all, the one who is Christ. And so we shouldn't, again, allow these thoughts to, to control us or to limit our willingness to be submissive to God. How many of you have had the experience of submitting to someone who was wise and loving versus someone who was not? Think about that for a second as we bring this to a conclusion. 
How many of you had had that experience of submitting to someone who was loving versus someone who was not? When you submit to someone who's loving and wise, the submission's not an issue, is it? It's actually a joy. But when you're submitting to someone who is not loving, a toxic person, well then submission becomes uh, incredibly hard and we wanna, we don't want to submit. Can I suggest to you if our ideas about Christ and God fall in the category of the one who is loving and good and gracious, then our submission will just naturally flow. It won't be something we, we struggle with. We'll want to do it. But if we think of Christ as uh, anti-science, anti-love, anti, uh, I mean, if we think of all of those negative things, go down the list, then of course we're not gonna wanna submit. But I wanna encourage you to remember who Christ is so that we will willingly offer our submission to him. So, how can we do that? How can we do that? How can we begin to value submission as a spiritual discipline and live into today's gospel text of taking up our cross and following Jesus? Well, I'd like you to consider first uh, what we've explored together, what we've looked at. Maybe you wanna meditate on the gospel text today. I think that would be very helpful. Just take the text, meditate on the verses and pray over the verses and ask God to open you up to this truth, to help you as you think about submission and, and how you can submit more and how you can use the practices to help you submit to God more in your life. Secondly, remember you have the calendar. Uh, that I've created that you can use. So each day you'll have a little exercise or practice, spiritual discipline to kind of help you move in the direction of valuing more this um, reflex of submission. And third, look at those areas in your life where you're saying no to God and start saying yes. I know it sounds simple, but again, Complexity is often found in the simplicity. Um, and so I want you to just to think about that. Where are you saying no Where, in, to God? And start saying yes. All the while asking God to help you. And start small. Start with those little resistances. Okay, those little resistances, those little daily resistances. And start just saying, okay, yes, not my will, but your will be done. And Holy Spirit, Spirit of God, help me to do this. Help me. I need your grace. I can't just do it by willpower. But help me say yes. So what are those little resistances you are holding to that you know you could drop if you just follow through on your submission to God? I like to end with the great uh, words of the great prophet Bob Dylan in uh, a song that I, 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 love, I love listening to. It's called, You Gotta Serve Somebody. You may be an ambassador to England or France. You may like to gamble. You may like to dance. You may be the heavyweight champion of the world. You may be a socialite with a long string of pearls, but you're gonna have to serve somebody, yes. Indeed, you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may, it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. You might be a rock and roll addict prancing on the stage. You might have drugs at your command, women in a cage. You may be a businessman or some high degree thief. They may call you doctor or they may call you chief, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Yes, you are. You're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it may be the devil or it may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. We're all serving. We're all submitting to somebody or something. It could be a person, a principal, whatever. In the end, submission is inescapable. The only real choice we have is who you're going to serve. Amen.
We invite you to send your offering to us online at our website at lincolnumc.com. Or you can send a check to us at Lincoln United Methodist Church, 629 I Street, Lincoln, California, 95648. Thank you so much for your offering. And now please join us as we express our gratitude to God in singing the doxology. Now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you. That means God smiling at you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you. That means know that God is looking at you and happy with you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom, wholeness of life. Amen. Thanks for being with us. Visit us online at www.lincolnumc.com.